An amoeba, rarely spelled amoeba, U.S. English spelled amoeba, plural am, o, e, b, a, s, or am, o, e, b, a, e, often called amoeboid, is a type of cell or organism which has the ability to alter its shape, primarily by extending and retracting pseudopods. Amoebas do not form a single taxonomic group, instead, they are found in every major lineage of eukaryotic organisms. Amoeboid cells occur not only among the protozoa, but also in fungi, algae, and animals. Microbiologists often use the terms amoeboid and amoeba interchangeably for any organism that exhibits amoeboid movement. In older classification systems, most amoebas were placed in the class or subphylum Sarcodina, a grouping of single celled organisms that possess pseudopods or move by protoplasmic flow. However, molecular phylogenetic studies have shown that Sarcodina is not a monophyletic group whose members share common descent. Consequently, amoeboid organisms are no longer classified together in one group. The best known amoeboid protists are the giant amoebae, Chaos carolinense and Amoeba proteus, both of which have been widely cultivated and studied in classrooms and laboratories. Other well known species include the so called brain eating amoeba. Nagleria fowleri, the intestinal parasite Entamoeba histolytica, which causes amoebic dysentery, and the multicellular social amoeba, or slime mold Dictyostelium discoideum. Shape, movement and nutrition Amoebae move and feed by using pseudopods, which are bulges of cytoplasm formed by the coordinated action of actin microfilaments pushing out the plasma membrane that surrounds the cell. The appearance and internal structure of pseudopods are used to distinguish groups of amoebae from one another. Amoebozoan species, such as those in the genus Amoeba, typically have bulbous lobos pseudopods, rounded at the ends and roughly tubular in cross-section. Circozoan amoeboids, such as Euglypha and Gromia, have slender thread-like pelos pseudopods. Foraminifera emit fine, branching pseudopods that merge with one another to form net-like reticulose structures. Some groups, such as the Radiolaria and Heliozoa, have stiff, needle-like, radiating axipodia actinopoda, supported from within by bundles of microtubules. Free-living amoebae may be testate, enclosed within a hard shell, or Naked, aka gymnamoebae, lacking any hard covering. The shells of testate amoebae may be composed of various substances, including calcium, silica, chitin, or agglutinations of found materials like small grains of sand and the frustules of diatoms. To regulate osmotic pressure, most freshwater amoebae have a contractile vacuole which expels excess water from the cell. This organelle is necessary because freshwater has a lower concentration of solutes such as salt than the amoeba's own internal fluids cytosol. Because the surrounding water is hypotonic with respect to the contents of the cell, water is transferred across the amoeba's cell membrane by osmosis. Without a contractile vacuole, the cell would fill with excess water and, eventually, burst. Marine amoebae do not usually possess a contractile vacuole because the concentration of solutes within the cell are in balance with the tonicity of the surrounding water. The food sources of amoebae vary. Some amoebae are predatory and live by consuming bacteria and other protists. Some are detritivores and eat dead organic material. Amoebae typically ingest their food by phagocytosis, extending pseudopods to encircle and engulf live prey or particles of scavenged material. Amoeboid cells do not have a mouth or cytostome, and there is no fixed place on the cell at which phagocytosis normally occurs. Some amoebae also feed by pinocytosis, imbibing dissolved nutrients through vesicles formed within the cell membrane. Size range the size of amoeboid cells and species is extremely variable. The marine amoeboid Mycisteria voergia is just 2.3 to 3 micrometers in diameter, within the size range of many bacteria. At the other extreme, the shells of deep sea xenophyophores can attain 20 centimeters in diameter. Most of the free living freshwater amoebae commonly found in pond water, ditches, and lakes are microscopic, but some species, such as the so called giant amoebae, Palomycia palustris and Chaos carolinense, can be large enough to see with the naked eye. Amoebae as specialized cells and life cycle stages 
Some multicellular organisms have amoeboid cells only in certain phases of life, or use amoeboid movements for specialized functions. In the immune system of humans and other animals, amoeboid white blood cells pursue invading organisms, such as bacteria and pathogenic protists, and engulf them by phagocytosis. Amoeboid stages also occur in the multicellular fungus like protists, the so called slime molds. Both the plasmodial slime molds, currently classified in the class Myxogastria, and the cellular slime molds of the groups Acracida and Dictyostelida, live as amoebae during their feeding stage. The amoeboid cells of the former combine to form a giant multinucleate organism, while the cells of the latter live separately until food runs out, at which time the amoebae aggregate to form a multicellular migrating slug. Which functions as a single organism. Other organisms may also present amoeboid cells during certain life cycle stages, e.g., the gametes of some green algae and pennate diatoms, the spores or dispersal phases of some mesomycetozoa, and the sporoplasm stage of myxozoa and of acetosporia. Amoebae as organisms Early history and origins of sarcodina The earliest record of an amoeboid organism was produced in 1755 by August Johann Rosel von Rosenhof, who named his discovery, Der kleine Proteus, the little Proteus. Rosel's illustrations show an unidentifiable freshwater amoeba, similar in appearance to the common species now known as amoeba proteus. The term Proteus animalcule remained in use throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, as an informal name for any large, free living amoeboid. In 1822, the genus Amoeba from the Greek amoeba moib, meaning change, was erected by the French naturalist Bory de Saint Vincent. Bory's contemporary, C. G. Ehrenberg, adopted the genus in his own classification of microscopic creatures, but changed the spelling to amoeba. In 1841, Félix Dujardin coined the term sarcode, from Greek sarx sarx, flesh, and eidos eidos, form, for the thick, glutinous, homogeneous substance, which fills protozoan cell bodies. Although the term originally referred to the protoplasm of any protozoan, it soon came to be used in a restricted sense to designate the gelatinous contents of amoeboid cells. Thirty years later, the Austrian zoologist Ludwig Karl Schmerda used sarcode as the conceptual basis for his division Sarcodia, a phylum-level group made up of unstable, changeable organisms with bodies largely composed of sarcode. Later workers, including the influential taxonomist Otto Butchley, amended this group to create the class Sarcodina, a taxon that remained in wide use throughout most of the 20th century. Within the traditional sarcodina, amoebae were generally divided into morphological categories, on the basis of the form and structure of their pseudopods. Amoebae with pseudopods supported by regular arrays of microtubules such as the freshwater heliozoa and marine radiolaria were classified as actinopods, whereas those with unsupported pseudopods were classified as rhizopods. The rhizopods were further subdivided into lobos, phylos, and reticulos amoebae, according to the morphology of their pseudopods. Dismantling of Sarcodina In the final decade of the 20th century, a series of molecular phylogenetic analyses confirmed that Sarcodina was not a monophyletic group. In view of these findings, the old scheme was abandoned and the amoebae of Sarcodina were dispersed among many other high-level taxonomic groups. Today, the majority of traditional sarcodines are placed in two eukaryote supergroups, Amoebozoa and Rhizaria. The rest have been distributed among the excavates, opisticants, and stramenopiles. Some, like the centrohalida, have yet to be placed in any supergroup. Classification Recent classification places the various amoeboid genera in the following groups. Some of the amoeboid groups cited, e.g., part of chrysophytes, part of xanthophytes, chlorarachneophytes, were not traditionally included in sarcodina, being classified as algae or flagellated protozoa. Pathogenic interactions with other organisms Some amoebae can infect other organisms pathogenically, causing disease. 
Entamoeba histolytica is the cause of amoebiasis, or amoebic dysentery. Negleria fowleri, the brain-eating amoeba, is a freshwater native species that can be fatal to humans if introduced through the nose. Acanthamoeba can cause amoebic keratitis and encephalitis in humans. Balamuthia mandrillaris is the cause of often fatal granulomatous amoebic meningoencephalitis. Amoeba have been found to harvest and grow the bacteria implicated in plague. Meiosis recent evidence indicates that several amoebozoal lineages undergo meiosis. Orthologs of genes employed in meiosis of sexual eukaryotes have recently been identified in the acanthamoeba genome. These genes included SPO11, MRE11, RAD50, RAD51, RAD52, MND1, DMC1, MSH and MLH. This finding suggests that the acanthamoeba are capable of some form of meiosis and may be able to undergo sexual reproduction. The meiosis-specific recombinase, DMC1, is required for efficient meiotic homologous recombination, and DMC1 is expressed in Entamoeba histolytica. The purified DMC1 from E. histolytica forms presynaptic filaments and catalyses ATP-dependent homologous DNA pairing and DNA strand exchange over at least several thousand base pairs. The DNA pairing and strand exchange reactions are enhanced by the eukaryotic meiosis specific recombination accessory factor, heterodimer, HOP2 MND1. These processes are central to meiotic recombination, suggesting that E. histolytica undergoes meiosis. Studies of entamoeba invadens found that, during the conversion from the tetraploid uninucleotropozoite to the tetranucleate cyst, homologous recombination is enhanced. Expression of genes with functions related to the major steps of meiotic recombination also increase during encystations. These findings in E. invadens, combined with evidence from studies of E. histolytica indicate the presence of meiosis in the entamoeba. Dictyostelium discoideum in the supergroup amoebozoa can undergo mating and sexual reproduction including meiosis when food is scarce. Since the amoebozoa diverged early from the eukaryotic family tree, these results suggest that meiosis was present early in eukaryotic evolution. Furthermore, these findings are consistent with the proposal of Lahr et al., that the majority of amoeboid lineages are anciently sexual. References external links The Amoebe website of Mikiver Lab of the University of Edinburgh brings together information from published sources. Amoebas are more than just blobs Sun animacules and amoebas molecular expressions Digital video gallery, pond life, amoeba protozoa, some good, informative amoeba videos. Amoebae, protists which move and feed using pseudopodia at the Tree of Life web project Siemensma, F. Microworld, World of Amoeboid Organisms. HTTP colon slash slash www.arcella.nl slash Palowski, J. and Berkey, F. 2009. Entangling the Phylogeny of Amoeboid Protists. Journal of Eukaryotic Microbiology 56.1, 16-25, 7. Volker, E. and Clow, S. Pennard Labs, The Fascinating World of Amoebae. HTTP colon slash slash www.pennard.de slash Wolochnik, J. and Aspic, H. 2007. Amoeban, Paradebiespiel fur probleme der phylogenetic, classification und nomenklatter. Denisia 20-323-358.